Well, climbing out of a multi-billion dollar hole when it comes to budget problems, Arizona ranks as one of the worst in the country. And any minute now, State Treasurer Dean Martin is expected to outline his plan to fix it. Javier is live at the state capitol with more. Good morning. Good morning, and as you mentioned, we're waiting for a news conference by State Treasurer Dean Martin. It's expected to start any moment now, and he's going to address some of the state's financial woes. As you know, the state is facing a $2.9 billion budget deficit for this fiscal year, which is halfway through. Now, you're looking at an empty podium right now, and uh, as soon as uh, Treasurer Dean Martin steps to that podium and, and prepares to speak, we will take you there live. Now, one of his remedies to this situation has to do with an investigation that turned up significant sums of money legally owed to the state of Arizona under federal law. We're expecting that he will address uh, several other issues having to do with this budget deficit that Arizona is facing. As you mentioned, Tara, one of the worst throughout the country. Now, yesterday, uh, some state chambers uh, met to focus on Arizona's budget crisis and to talk about the upcoming legislative session and balancing the budget. Uh, some, of, some of the ideas uh, that they are um, proposing right now have to do with pulling some money and dumping it into the general fund to try to uh, help with this budget shortfall. Now, again, a lot of, lot of talk, a lot has gone into this for several months. You might recall during the regular legislative session, uh, they ended the legislative session without a balanced budget. They've held several special sessions since then and kind of chopped away at the budget deficit. But as it stands right now, it's at $2.9 billion. One of the other proposals has to do with a temporary sales tax increase. That's something that Governor Jan Brewer has proposed for a very long time. It hasn't been one of the, uh, I guess, best received ideas. Initially, they wanted to put it on a ballot and uh, send it to the voters to decide. They missed uh, some of those deadlines to put it on the ballot. So here we are, uh, well into 2010 or 2010, as they're saying, and we still have a $2.9 billion budget deficit. Yeah, there's a lot to deal with here. Javier, thanks very much. We'll have more on that news conference in just a little bit. In fact, I think we're hearing, uh, Javier, that the state treasurer is getting ready to start speaking. So we'll take you live down there. And as they begin the press conference, let's take a look. I think they're setting up some charts. As you can imagine, it's a pretty complicated issue with a lot of numbers involved. So here's state treasurer Dean Martin. Okay, thank you all for coming. Uh, uh, back in last year, uh, our uh, research uh, was showing that we are out of money. We've been talking about this for uh, um, a about three years now. That the state was going to run out of uh, uh, was going to experience a, a shortfall. That we were running low on cash. That we were going to run out of cash. We ran out of cash back in April 15th of last year. Uh, since that time, we have continued to talk to you about the deficit and the shortfall that we've been experiencing. Uh, the good news I have is we look like we're going to get through the month of January. Uh, we were very close uh, moving into December. Uh, the governor's office delayed some payments to the universities, uh, put in a, a slow pay uh, rule, and that has allowed us to get through the worst uh, part of uh, the month, uh, which, which right now what we're showing this week would be. Uh, it uh, looks like we'll be able to get through January as long as the sale of state buildings occurs the end of this month and we're funded for that, we should be okay as uh, uh, to get through the cash flow for the month of February. If the sale of state buildings does not happen, if the cash from that does not occur, we will not have uh, enough uh, cash to pay all the bills that are due in the month of February. Since we were looking at being so tight, uh, um, assuming even if the sale of state buildings occurs, and it's likely to occur, uh, we're still in a major uh, budget deficit. Uh, we're projecting to be a billion plus in the red uh, uh, this year, and uh, we need more cash. 
Uh, having said that, last uh, uh, year we started looking into all the seat cushions, uh, pulling up every uh, corner looking for money. And uh, one of the things that uh, came across, actually, I was speaking to our Pinal County Sheriff uh, uh, more than a month ago now about uh, uh, diff different things, and we were reminded of a little press conference that the former governor, now uh, Department of Homeland Security, uh, Secretary Janet Napolitano had about the costs of illegal immigration for the state. We did a little research, we pulled together all of her invoices, and you can see here, this is one of her invoices from 2008 in which she detailed the expenses uh, under what's called the SCAP program. This is basically uh, under federal law. The federal law states that, that they are to pay the cost of incarceration of illegal immigrants uh, based on the prevailing or average uh, uh, fee in that state, the average cost in that state. Unfortunately, even in uh, uh, former Governor Napolitano's own words, the federal government only pays pennies on the dollars. And so uh, we went through and pulled all of uh, her bills, and she charged interest on those uh, bills as well. We went and compiled not only the, the invoices that she provided, but we were able to get data all the way back to 1994, and we have updated uh, uh, the federal reimbursement, the state costs, and the accumulated interest. And right now, if you look at, we have had nearly since uh, uh, 1994 through 2008, we've had nearly $1 billion in costs uh, for incarcerating of illegal immigrants who have committed crimes in the state. We've only been reimbursed for $144 million. That means the state of Arizona is owed $784 million, and the accumulated interest costs associated with not having this money adds up to new, another $273 million. This is $1 billion that, according to federal law, we are owed as a state. Uh, now, this is one of those strange times where I actually agree with the former Governor Napolitano. This money is owed the state of Arizona. She said so as a lawyer, as our governor, now as Director of Homeland Security. She's in a position to uh, make good on this bill. So we submitted this earlier uh, this uh, uh, week to uh, the Secretary and are asking her to go ahead and, and uh, move forward on paying this. Except for the fact the bill doesn't go to Homeland Security, the bill goes to the Department of Justice. That's correct. The Department of Justice is, and the Department of Homeland Security are both cabinet level agencies responsible for reporting on the costs uh, and needs for the state. So we chose to uh, send both Napolitano and Department of Justice, uh, the Attorney General Eric Holder, this invoice. Uh, uh, we figured that Napolitano should remember uh, that she asked for this every year uh, uh, for many years. Uh, and, and should help us get paid. Including the eight years that Bush didn't put it in his budget, including many of the years that the Republicans ran Congress. It seems to be something that Congress said, you know, yeah, we passed it, but it's subject, as the state was saying would go, and you know as a legislator, subject to legislative appropriation. They didn't appropriate the money. Somehow, uh, you discovering this uh, on the uh, cusp of a gubernatorial campaign doesn't seem to be news here, Dean. This is not a case of, uh, of anything regarding the politics. This is according to the fact that the state's broke, we need cash. Uh, this $1 billion would completely replenish the state's operating fund. Uh, the, the state is literally in the red uh, by the amount that the, the, the this bill is owed. Uh, uh, we're looking for cash. Uh, uh, the fact that uh, uh, this comes up at this timing doesn't mean anything. This bill's still owed. This is not a Republican or a Democrat issue. This is a math problem. And the fact is, with uh, what other states are owed and everything else, Congress is not going to come up with the money. So this seems like a nice publicity stunt. The, diff here. the difference is you have an attorney who's now Department of Homeland Security director, who was a governor, who, uh, in her legal opinion, uh, said that the federal government owes this money. She's now in a position uh, uh, at the federal level uh, uh, overseeing the same things. And uh, the, the federal government did not change federal law. Federal law states that the state shall be reimbursed for this. Uh, they, the fact that they have not sent us the money uh, creates a legal uh, uh, argument. And uh, we're willing to pursue this uh, legally uh, if not. This happens, uh, we, the state of Arizona gets sued all the time. Uh, it's time we look at the federal government for paying bills that they owe. This isn't just the, the administration. Congress did not appropriate the funds. That's Kyle, true. McCain, you remember those two Republican senators? They haven't had any luck appropriating funds. I haven't seen them out there beating their chest in this. 
This isn't simply, you know, it's nice of you to say, well, Janet should be able to do this. Until Congress appropriates the funds, she can't do it. We're hoping to have an ally in our former governor in getting Congress to also move on this as well. Uh, I don't, it, it, this is not just the administration, it's all, Washington owes the bill. So when do you file the lawsuit as state treasurer or whatever? This is the final notice before uh, legal remedies are pursued. How soon does that come? All right, a billion plus in the red, and treasurer Dean.